Welcome to episode 62 of the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. I'm Brian Fisher. In the previous episode, 61, our guest was Sean Dotson discussing complacency. This podcast series focuses on the various subjects and topics to help you run a successful, profitable business. They're approximately 10 to 15 minutes long, so you can listen while commuting. Hopefully, you'll find one or two takeaways to implement per episode. Today's episode discusses your money. Our guest is Doug Peacock, owner of Peacock Wealth Group, which is based out of Fortville, Indiana. Doug Peacock was a high school football coach for over 30 years. Although he contributed on a regular basis to his retirement plan, at time for retirement, he was short for retirement income. A lot of red on his chart. This came as a shock. He said, why didn't someone tell me about this before? He realized he had done what he was supposed and told to do over his career, yet his retirement income was not what it needed to be. Doug decided to take matters into his own hands and started Peacock Wealth Group. Doug states, at Peacock Wealth Group, we grow wealth safely and predictably off the radar screen of the IRS destroy student loan debts without consolidation, pay for college without destroying your retirement, and leave a substantial legacy for your loved ones or charity. Let's welcome Doug Peacock. Doug, welcome to the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate the invitation and and love being here. Hope we can share some value. Thanks for joining us today, Doug. Doug, I'm always interested in people's stories. What's your background in becoming the owner of Peacock (laughs) Wealth Group? Yeah, it's uh, it's a little different. I never intended to be here. I was a high school football coach for 38 years. Uh, Eventually, the body gave out, so I had to get off of that field. And then I tried to retire from teaching. Ironically, that was 2008, and which was not a very good year to be retiring. And I learned that uh, I was considerably short on what I thought I needed to retire on. And come to find out, a lot of other people were in the same boat. So I learned uh, some other things, some different avenues to go with people. And actually started getting my former players out of student loan debt. And once I did that, as an educator, I learned it, it worked faster and better than I ever thought. So at that point, I had an obligation to go share this with people that I knew. Well, our topic today is your money. What's the difference between saving and investing? Well, I think saving has to be money that's dependable and, and it will be there the day that you need it most. I think it's also downplayed very, very well. And we we think about investing, oh, well, it's great returns, it's all that. And investing isn't what we thought it was. Investing, you know, it's not dependable. You have no idea what that account value is going to be the day that you need it most. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not against investing, but I, I always think that you automate your savings and then invest what you want to do, what you do. Go invest where you loved. And I mean, I've got people who invest in horses and cattle and antique cars, but save your money first. You know, go win, then then go play. Well, we're all told to invest in our 401ks or other retirement programs. What's your take on this philosophy? (laughs) I've never been fond of buying Wall Street products that are being sponsored by the government. (laughs) You know, good, good, good luck. If they truly wanted us to save money, why didn't they just lower the tax rate? It's not going, I mean, good luck with that. All right. And and plus, how's it working out? I mean, the Department of Labor, 95% of 65-year-olds are not economically independent. So now all of a sudden, they've got to make a decision on whether they're going to eat or pay for meds. And that's that's a hard, hard choice. So, I, you know, I think the better question is here, why is why would you deliberately participate in a program that's got a 95% failure rate? That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> We're speaking with Doug Peacock, owner of Peacock Wealth Group. Doug, as we invest in our retirement, is it really our money? You already, you already know that. <laughs> you know it's not your money. I hate to be the, 
And actually, that's some of the biggest arguments I get in that that account statement that you get every month or quarterly or whenever you get them. That's not all your money. It's theirs. And if you break that apart, there spells the IRS. So now you know who's getting that money. So I'm not a fan of them. I think problem is, I think we're seeing the effects of that. 90% of Americans are saving money in the wrong place. And it's where we can't get to it. And I promise you, the returns that they tell you you're getting don't match your statement. So go play with that a little while and you'll, you'll see who's actually benefiting from your qualified program. How can we avoid lifetime fees of our retirement plan and legally reduce future taxes? Well, you got, I mean, you got to change what you're doing. And unfortunately, nobody has a financial incentive to teach this. So most people already know this, that they, they're going to owe taxes on that money when they take it out of that qualified plan, whether it be a 401 or 403 IRA, take your pick. You know, your qualified retirement plan is so that the government will eventually get paid on the tax deferral that you took at the beginning. And if they don't get it on, you know, as you take it, then at 72, you will be required to take a required minimum distribution and they will get their cut. You have 13 yes, no questions uh, towards proper planning for retirement. What are those 13 questions? Well, it was just a, it was just a real quick one day. I was with a bunch of small business leaders. And they said, well, how can you best coach us in the direction that we're going? And I said, well, is, you know, let's, is it your money? The one we just talked about? No, it's not. Are you 100% sure it's going to be there the day that you need it most? My guess is no, just like me. Does your account set a new all-time high every day? And that is absolutely not true. So, I will tell you that everything that we do, our clients have a new high every day. We are guaranteed to grow. It's going to grow more more this year than it did last year. And you can't stop it from growing as long as you own the account. And that's that's a whole nother discussion. But the fourth one is, does your current financial storehouse generate additional income for you? And not only earn interest, but also does it pay you dividends? And while I'm talking, I want to make sure I get my disclaimer in that dividends in life insurance are not guaranteed. They've been paid the last 109 years consecutively, and I like that track record, but they are not guaranteed until they hit your cash value. Once they become a your, part of your cash value, they cannot be withdrawn, they cannot be reduced, and from that point on, it's guaranteed just like every other dollar in there. Number five is, do you have unlimited access to your money for your needs or your wants, particularly as a small business owner? 2008, I saw uh, some small businesses disappear forever because the first casualty of the recession and the drawback was capital, the, the availability of money. And banks only not, you know, they not only stopped lending, they also recalled some line of credits or reduced them or Cancel them all together. So, I mean, you've got to have access to money. Every business owner knows that. The lifeblood of his business or her business is, is cash flow. And you've got to have that. Number six, can you uh, leverage your money and still earn interest on it at the same time? Real estate people call this collateralization. And it's simply you're borrowing money, you're leveraging money that you have, but I'm not using my money. I'm using other people's money. So that my money continues to grow with uninterrupted compound interest. That's another lesson. If you interrupt that like everybody else, then you wind up in the average America with $100,000 in your save, in your retirement account. You can't interrupt it. And that's one of the advantages here. Seven, do you control the repayment terms of your loans now with your current bank? I promise you that's not true. You, you missed three or four payments that he's not going to be the nice banker that you thought he was. I mean, one of my friends says, yeah, they'll give, you know, they're going to loan you an umbrella as long as the sun is shining. But it clouds up, they want the umbrella back. And number eight, do you offer employees incentives to stay with you? Many, many employees or employers have been misled by offering qualified retirement plans to all of their employees. 
And there's a whole bunch of traps in that. The truth is, what if I could do it on this? And I can, and it sounds like we have a bad connotation for this word, but I can discriminate to have the same value that my 401 would have to have. And that's, a, again, another lesson, another discussion. But there are options out there that we haven't been taught. Number nine, do you want to pay more taxes? That was the football coach question in there. All right, just so the football coaches could get one right. You know, it's ironic that everybody thinks taxes are going up, but nobody's ever asked you, do you want to pay them? Like it's an option. And it is. We can do that. Do you want the courts to decide and tell where your money is going to go when you die? If you don't have something that's going to pass outside of probate, and you know, the nice part is policies are creditor, predator proof, and judgment proof in most states. You'll have to check on your state, but that is true in most of the states. Do you prefer to allow your competition to take advantage of opportunities because he or she had cash available? If you have to go to a board of a bank for a proposed loan, that's not going to happen in a day or two. If I have cash available, I can close a deal before you ever get to your bank board. And that happens all the time with people who have matured policies. I love what they do that way. And it, it doesn't have to be real estate. It can be anything, whatever your opportunity wants. Well, do you, uh, when you graduate, in other words, when you die, do you want some of your money to go to people you didn't designate? If you have a common, any kind of plan and you've got two kids, you just got a third kid. His name, his name is Sammy. Uncle Sammy. And if you've got two or more kids, Uncle Sam is going to take more of that cut than your children are. And I'm not sure that's what you intended to do. And last one, actually, it's a baker's dozen here. Do you have a guaranteed exit strategy for your business or for that matter, your life? We are in a situation right now. I talked to a guy a couple of weeks ago who wants to sell his business. He just can't find people to buy it or that can get the financing to buy it. Well, what if you built one of these policies and now all of a sudden I can finance the sale of my business? So the options there, are, I want you to make sure you, hey, you have an exit plan because nobody thinks about that when they're too busy running the business, everything's jacked up and, and here we go. But think about when you want to move and settle a little bit. We're speaking with Doug Peacock, owner of Peacock Wealth Group. Doug, is there anything I've not asked that you'd like to add? I think that you've got to recognize that you're in the banking business already. Whether you know that or not, you're just on the wrong side of the counter. So why not make the money that they do just by recouping the interest, the loans, and everything that you're paying other people? And guys, other people are making a lot more money off of your money than you are. And if you're okay with that, I'm not your guy. But if that bothers you, I can help you. I would just tell you, take control of the banking function in your life. Doug, how can people get in contact with you? Everything's on the website. If you'll go to peacockwealthgroup.com, you'll see everything there. Everything that we do, and there's a lot more of what we do than just this. But I mean, I am primarily a get out of debt guy and go make sure that your future has a paycheck involved with it that is not taxable. Very well stated. Doug, thank you for joining us today on the BCF Orgy podcast, The Business of Business. Brian, absolutely my pleasure. I appreciate your invite. Thank you. Thank you. My sincere thanks to Doug Peacock for being our guest. Managing the performance of your company is one of the most important things you do as a leader. This podcast is on over 20 directories. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. In search, type BCF ORG. Be sure to leave a space between BCF and ORG. Feel free to share this podcast with people who you think may benefit. A strong rating of these podcasts would be appreciated. If you'd like to reach out to me with any questions, comments, ideas, or potentially be a guest like Doug, please go to bcforg.com. There's a red Contact Us button in the middle of the homepage. A LinkedIn symbol is on the upper right. Click on that if you'd like to see my profile. All the podcasts are available by clicking on the website podcast page in the reference bar. 
These podcasts will be released the first and third Tuesday each month. In the next episode, 63, our guest will be Sean Shuchuk discussing high-performance leadership. In business, running a successful, profitable business is the ultimate scorecard. You are never done and can always be better. It tends to be more fun than work, frustrating at times, but can be very rewarding. From BCF ORG Corp., I'm Brian Fisher, wishing you the best. Thanks. Thanks.